wow, that was a really cool demo app. I really liked it. I hope you guys love it as well. And with that, I am now very pleased to bring you the last release I want to talk about, the last improvement, the big finale for the RE2 R2 release. And that's the LED driver overhaul. Well, why did I overdrive the LED driver system? Well, it's simply to support the NeoPixel strings. That's right, Igniter 2 now supports NeoPixels for RGB string blades. So what are NeoPixels? Here I have posted a couple examples of NeoPixels. On the top, you will see the Howdy sign. Those are uh, multiple strips of NeoPixels. And because they're individually addressable, you can get different colors for each dot and you can spell out words. And then on the bottom, that's gonna be the types of strips that we're gonna stick up in the blades. And you can see where the hue is changing as it goes around from blue to purple. And again, because each LED can be value can be changed independently, you can change the colors such as this. What are some advantages to NeoPixel blades? Why use this over the standard LED that we've come to love in this hobby? Well, one thing is you're going to get a super bright and even blade. Uh, this is true with any type of string blades, but with NeoPixels, you're also going to get RGB which is pretty hard to do with the standard style string blade. You also have a digital interface, so there's only three wires to hook up. Three connections you only need when you plug in your connector, so that makes it really easy to deal with instead of multiple segment standard blades. You can also do standard style five millimeter LEDs. There's NeoPixel LEDs like that, or you can use the strip blade. And let's look at those two right now, starting with actually the strip blade. So here's a link to one that I actually purchased from Autofruit. It's a 144 uh, LED per meter strip. And it there's two ways to make this a blade out of these. You can put them back to back in the blade, or you can do a three in a triangular prism fashion. In both cases though, with the 144 meter uh, LED per meter strip, you do need to cut off this plastic housing it's shown in the picture there. You need to cut that off so it'll fit. Um, other than that, you pretty much can just stick it in the hilt. Here's a picture of the uh, string blade on the top versus the bottom, which is the any Cree RGB with the green LED on only. And what you can see is this is the triangular prism configuration of three NeoPixels of the 144 LEDs per meter. So you can see that there's a big difference in evenness and brightness between these two. Now let's talk about the second way to build it. There's also five millimeter um, LEDs that you can get from SparkFun, as I've uh, put the link here. So these are straw hat style, which is great because they're very stubby, as you can see from the picture. So that way you can put a lot in a row. There's no corn cobbing whatsoever with these type of LEDs. Uh, they're also clear, which is great because they're very bright that way. And then you can put all your diffusion on the outside, which I've found makes the brightest and most even string blade. And here I have some pictures doing the install. So you can see on the top two pictures, on the left-hand side, I actually have what I called my left group, and on the right-hand side is the right group. Well, the left group, I've bent the pin so that the power is facing backwards and the ground is facing forwards, and it's vice versa for the right-hand group. And then when I build a strip, I have to alternate left and right, left and right. And by doing that, the DNs and D-outs will align perfectly, alternating up the blade. So I have like DN, D-out, DN, D-out, DN, D-out, etc. up the blade when I build it, as shown in that last picture on the bottom. And if I continue forward, here's another segment being built. And I just wanted to call out, I built these in small segments, about eight each, uh, build a bunch of eights, and then at the very end, combine them. And I only did this because it's a pain to deal with a giant long thing on the bench. So I kept them small, only built them at the end. Here's the result, and the results are pretty awesome. The bottom is the any Cree uh, RGB with just the green dye on again, and the top is this style of string bait. Notice at the bottom how near the tip of that blade, it looks like it's not even on. I assure you it's on, and I assure you that any Cree is pretty bright. But my camera had to adjust a lot because the top, being this style of LED, is super bright and even. So let's try a photon blade. So I changed it to blue, put in the photon blade. So let me go back and go forward again and watch. You can see, yes, it's brighter on the bottom. The photon blade does better, but it still doesn't compare to the any, the, uh, NeoPixel LEDs, they're just so much more bright and even. Two blades in one board. So up until now, all the boards that supported string blades were a separate board that you'd have to buy separately, you'd have to know you're doing a string in advance. 
Igniter 2 doesn't have that problem. You can run both a NeoPixel type string blade or a normal LED off the exact same board. You just have two different SD cards, one with all the DAT files for the string and one for all the DATs for all the normal LEDs. So you don't have to plan ahead. You just buy the board and whatever you decide to build, you can build. And in fact, you could go ahead and make a saber that had connectors, one connector for the normal LED, one connector for the string blade, and then just two SD cards. By swapping the card, swapping the LED and the connector, your saber could do both, no problem. Another, I'm gonna go now over two specific features for string blades. The first is extension and retraction flow. So unlike other uh, segmented style string blades, which like the MR blades or any other blades that have built in the past uh, that are string blades, the extension and retraction, just this segment, the first segment comes on, the second segment, and there's usually about six segments and they just come on. It's a little blocky and not exactly like the movie because of there's discrete segments that come on completely. However, with the extension um, and flow, every single LED comes on in a row completely. So it's much more uh, streamlined. It looks much more realistic. And further, the top 12 or so LEDs actually have a fade to them. So it really looks like there's pushing out and sucking back in. Very lively and awesome effect. And also what's really great is it still retains the length uh, of the sound file. If you put zero in the config, the extension and retractions will completely match the sound file for a great effect. Though, of course, if you want to have it really fast and not match the sound file, you can always put some specific value. The other feature that's specific for the string blaze is the impact blast. Now, up until now, every single blast effect has pretty much been like a chunk of LEDs or all the, you know, the single main LED and the whole blade just changes the color. Uh, that's okay, but what really happens, if you watch, you, have, you think you have a lightning bolt that's hitting a certain area and the impact dissolves in that area. So I wanted to replicate that and that's exactly what Impact Blast does. It replicates this energy hitting the blade and dissolving out at that spot. So it, it, it randomly picks a width, picks a spot, and makes the color and fades that out as if it's hitting and, and, and absorbing. And then further, it randomly picks where that spot is. And you can configure the range of that from the middle of the blade. You can configure how wide. So if you want the whole blade to be able to have impacts or you just want it in the narrow section in the middle. This is very great for allowing you to have a unique experience with your impacts. And finally, what's cool is the color is the same. So you set the color and you can set the blast shade and that will, using the random spot, it will also randomly vary the color and the shade of that color. And finally, this is a per font setting. So if you want the legacy blast for the string blade, you can do that for any number of fonts. And here's the I2R2 config editor. And this is gonna show how to set the width. So here, there's a new slider at the bottom. This allows you to set your width. So you can ch change this to how many um, LEDs from the middle you want to be able to go down and up. So if you want, if you put 10 LEDs, that means you go 10 and 10 between there is where the blast will happen. And alternating clash, this isn't a new feature. Well, it's a new feature for this release. It's not specific to string blades, but I want to call out, it's optimized for string blades. Uh, unlike the normal LED where you just get the color changing from high to low, with the string blade, you also get variations up and down the blade. So this is a vibrant effect that has a very changing colors and it changes for per um, blade setting. So as you do dual phase and change your blade, it'll, the clash will look so different even though the clash color is the same because your blade underneath has changed. You get a great different effect. It's super bright too. You'll see this in the upcoming demo. And speaking of that demo, let's just show it. I think you guys are gonna love this.
Wow, that demo was out of this world. I I just loving the NeoPixel support. But I do want to say there's a couple things to be aware of before everyone just jumps out and spends all the money to buy the NeoPixel strings for their blades. The first thing is your blade is going to be a lot heavier. Um, this is true for any type of string blade, but just be aware it's going to even though you're using a um, you're not using a heavy grade blade, you're using a light blade, but by the time you put the string in there and put the padding in there, it feels like a heavy grade blade. It's also more fragile than a normal blade because all your electronics are up in the blade. Again, like any other string blade, but just be aware of that. This isn't for dueling. It's also a pain in the butt to build. Uh, again, this is similar to the standard style blade, uh, string blades that exist today. This is more of a pain though because you have four pins you have to deal with and you have to have the left and the right group. You can't just do all the, the LEDs up in, in a row. You have to have the left and right, build them in order, and four uh, connections. So it is a bit of a pain. There's, uh, there's another problem with all the existing strips. If you, you're thinking, well, I can use a strip, those are pre-built. Well, I found that every version using back-to-back -back or using the triangle prism, I'll get some sh vertical shadowing. So that's, if I use the back-to-the-back -back where they meet, so if this is the LED side, when you twist it like this, you'll get a small, a vertical shadow there. And if you're using the triangle prism, you get three vertical shadows. They're smaller uh, where the triangles meet, but you do get three of them up the blade. 
Now I'm gonna put this out to the community. I think you guys might be able to find a diffusion that I haven't thought of that will fix that, but I have yet to solve that problem. And then there's another problem with the five millimeters. So you think, okay, well the five millimeters don't have any shadowing problems, so they're perfect. Unfortunately, they have a small problem where the blade flashes on all blue for like a half a second and then turns off when you pull the kill key. You can work around this by either having a separate switch for the power to the blade or by making, when you have your connector, you can make the ground and the uh, DN pins longer than the power. Put your blade in so the power is not connected, then pull the kill key, then push the blade in the rest of the way. Those two things will fix this problem. Um, but otherwise, if you don't do either of those two things, you will get that flash. There's no X Saber, X Drive support. So in other words, if you want a cross drive Saber, you're still gonna have to use normal LEDs. And finally, cost. The blade electronics for either method are about 150 bucks. So you're talking like the same price of the board, you're also paying for the electronics. So just remember that before building this. But besides that, awesome feature. And in fact, all the features that I added, are, I, I believe are great improvements to an already great product. So we went over these awesome improvements. We went over the low power disable, um, how we, now you can turn that feature off. We talked about activation configurations, how you can choose different ways to turn on your saber per font. We talked about the color editor allowing the amber support. So in case you have a motor or the RGBA, RGBW LEDs, that's supported. The saber FX idle mode. So for those that want those awesome quotes and awesome ambience effects when the saber is not running. We talked finally about the smash sound for the improvements, how we can have, instead of just swinging a miss and impacting, we actually have slicing through and breaking stuff. And then I went on to talk about alternating clash, how I wanted to replicate the lightning, the changing of hues, and now you can alternate between the blade and the clash color. We talked about the Sabre demo app, how the Sabre comes to life and is not a brick anymore when it's sitting there. And we talked about NeoPixel support, specifically the different strip, strip types, extension retraction flow, impact blast, specific for the string blades, and then of course I went into demos of all of the, most, the features of that. So that is it for the Igniter 2 R2 release. Ton of features, ton of improvements. I hope you guys are all inspired now to go out and do new experiences, try new things, go out and try the NeoPixels, come up with awesome ways to use your Saber. Thank you very much for supporting Nigon's Electronic Creations. Thank you for supporting me and all my endeavors, and thank you for watching this video. Godspeed, everyone.